Hey guys, so uh, it's been a long time since I last recorded a video, I know, but um, I'm a little, you know, insecure and there's been a lot of stuff going on. But I also wanted to give a, a update and uh, it's not been easy. Uh, there's cat hair in my face. And yeah, this is a dinner. We have a co-host today because she is um, in heat and well, she's about to start and she's really cuddly. She usually is a very silent cat. She doesn't talk, but she um, she wants to hide and I can't let her in the closet because otherwise she'll stay there all time and won't eat. Because she's cuddly and she wants to get me into the closet with her. But we can't be in the closet. We need to eat. She doesn't understand English. But yeah. So there's been a lot going on. And last Thursday was, you know, really a wake-up call. Um, because... Uh, I went grocery shopping and uh, it was eerie. Everything was empty, roads that are usually packed full. Um, we couldn't go to the usual place I go shopping because it was closed. Um, and uh, we went to Intrunkement, which is another city. And it was so weird. I think the supermarket wasn't taking the necessary precautions because they weren't sanitizing the carts and the fruit wasn't packaged. I mean, yeah, people should be able to choose the food, but it's a bad situation. They should at least uh, package uh, certain fruits, you know, a certain amount of it or have someone there um, picking up the fruit for you. It's okay. I like to pick my fruit. Not only I can sanitize at home, but people were, um, you know, careful. Uh, there's a thing. Uh, I went to the government. The police was there. Uh, they asked us what we were going to do in the city while we were going there. It was really you know, there's that eerie feeling about all of that. We said we went grocery shopping. They said, oh, but usually only a one household men can go shopping. My father said that, no, she doesn't have a car. I need to drive her. And they said, okay, but next time, maybe try to do the shopping for her. Uh, but uh, yeah, so they let us in the city, and my brother lives there. He's still treating it, even though you know all of this all of this is going on. Uh, it was weird because I'm not a touchy feely person. Everyone always calls me, you know, a beast or whatever. Because I people like we do in, in Portugal with a kiss and all that. Maybe my father or my mother, close relatives. But I grew up always being insulted for not meeting people the way other people do. Like, I need my own space. I don't want to be touched by people, you know, at most a handshake and even that. Uh, you know, um, I was never much of a read, but even it struck me when I was about to say goodbye. My father, uh, that usually me for not reading, he was like, uh, no, social distancing. That's someone who spent my entire life telling me. Um, you know, a social or something like that. And my brother, too, like 
he was also always a bit like me, not very much. Um, so, yeah. But that was like, stay away. And uh, it's weird because I used to meet my dad. And uh, because, you know, it's something they, well, because they always notice my personality about my love. So it's, I think that's what struck me the most, is that even someone who spent my life noticing how little contact with other humans I have, now recoiling himself from any contact. So that's when it hit me. And I've been talking about this, I've been devaluing this for months on hand, and this is this is it. This is not the flu. This is not no and and when the H one N one flu and you know Japan handles amazingly. I think it's probably the safest place to be is in Japan. But so I knew that this was thing. And uh, no one ever trusted me. I also was um, wanting to be prepared, like, uh, also to prep, to keep at least a three month food supply at all times. Oh, I can just go and buy when I need it. I said, no, the thing is that you don't know what you can expect. I said, the food will spoil. And I said, you rotate the supplies. And he said, you know, I have enough money, I can always buy food. And he has the same approach, approach still, but I think they're learning how they always go, oh, ah, Linda, Linda, I'm sorry, she's really needy now. So, um, approach, and they called me crazy, doomsday prepper, or whatever. I still have uh, some stuff that I saved up. Thank God, imagine something happens and I'm at home. I like to go shopping because I love fresh fruit and stuff. You all have to be prepared, and it's hard to tell my family, you know, we have why, why don't you know, yeah, she wants to climb on my back. And she hurts. She has her claws. And uh, I always say that if you have some sheep, you have land. Uh, he, he had bulls. And I told him, why don't you save the cow and the bull when you start breeding? Oh, I don't know. it takes too long to get. Because 
the Zelda video my And he said, and my mom told him that I was uh, weeding out the land because we didn't have no money for a tractor. And uh, my brother just said, oh, she's just doing that because she heard me talk to dad. Obnoxious, because I've been telling this for years that we have land, we have conditions to build. There's no reason we can't do it. I don't tell her not to, so to sell his inheritance for and father spent his entire life buying stuff to give kids. First thing they do is sell everything. That's such an insult to my grandfather's memory. But even if it wasn't an insult to his memory, you know, land is always a good thing to fall back if, in case of need. You fall, you get into a communist dictatorship and they take away property. Yeah, so that's been that. It's it's really weird. Family never listened to my advice, and they're each other and pretending that I never said anything. So it's really upsetting. And yeah. So oh, I also got Israel. I try to support Israel as much as I can. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, it's inverted. Oh, yeah. Instead of the cheaper Tunisian dates. Um, I wish I had gotten the other box that was there. Support Israel whenever you can. Uh, um, everyone's boycotting them. And, uh, they, you know, they could use some support. And boycott the nations that are boycotting them. Replace every product that one is boycotting Israel produces for there. Good advice. So yeah. And uh, now about me. I've been trying to weed the land that we own, and it's been hard because. I haven't cultivated it in, in a while because the last year I did, one destroyed everything. They vandalized everything, and I got really upset. And I stopped doing anything. And uh, now it's been really hard because the tractor, uh, we we had money, and uh, since my godfather what he did to our family. Uh, we don't have money. And, uh, a neighbor sent a tractor because it was wildfires and it wasn't the person that usually goes. And the paths that my grandfather and my great-grandfather built so rebuild those paths and it's going to be a little chaotic but it, the paths uh, is really harder to take out the weed because it has bricks in it it has rocks in it and to take the weed to deroot it then I'm going to have to fix the paths but I'm thinking you know a lot of time to well April is the right month to see more I really need to prepare the land because I have no money uh, for that. I have to do it all myself. My mom has no house to do it, so I have the seeds, I have the will, um, I haven't done anything just because it's raining. Oh, Linda. Usually she doesn't tell. So it's really cute. You really know when she's in heat because she's a very sour cat. When she was a baby, my mom even thought that she had no, you know, no, that she was, uh, she, you know, that she was mute or something. 
But so, uh, when she was around four or five months old, she started singing. And she had never even so much, so much as meowed very tiny, a very tiny bit. So, you know when she's in heat, because that's when she talks. She usually is not, you know, rough, uh, touchy. She, she'll get close to you. She'll look at you. She'll forget that if she wants to eat, she'll just sit and stare at you. Really, really lovely. Hola. So yeah, which brings me to my next topic, and that's a, a subject I've I've uh, considered for long, uh, which is that most Jews, and I think is considered this, and I'm not Jewish. That's why I didn't want to myself uh, because I'm not Jewish yet um, but uh, living in a country that is not um, I, I consider it because most <laughs> I did it now come, come, come. Um, most Jews don't consider it which is um Days, Jews rely too much on kosher certification. They rely on too much on other people to kosherize their food. In, in situations like this, of thing, when everything is closed, knows how to do. You know, properly slaughter animals. Like, imagine you live in, in Judea. You have some land. You could grow some heads. And uh, if at least one of the members of the family knew how to do things the kosher way, uh, We'd be able you know, to eat and feed ourselves properly because we were like too much, you know, people courses in how to do kosher slaughter. These situations expose just how much you're vulnerable to food on a system. So, talk about how every Jewish person should keep kosher. How every piece of meat needs to be, you know, bloodless. The animal needs to be uh, unharmed. The kosher as uh, you know, the animal needs to be blemished. Uh, the slaughter needs to be as painless as possible. But no one teaches Jews how to do that. So, what happens in case of a disaster is that there's only two options. Other, either you'll go without essential nutrients and take and start a vegetarian or you start eating non-kosher food needlessly because you know how to prepare and for instance a chicken my mother uh, they had animals and I remember chickens I have helped them uh, you know take the fruits process the animals. It's a simple thing. You just need to learn to do it properly so that every Jew is and doesn't depend on non-kosher food. So I think that um, 
we should have at least people in the population ready to make sure we have enough kosher, like a couple of household members be how to proper do sashit, sashit, I don't know how to pronounce it in English. So, it's an important thing. And yes, I know it's illegal in some countries to do slaughter outside of the um, uh, slaughterhouses, but still, I think every Jew know how to kosherize not only their kitchen, but also how to make a kosher kill. Because we never know what tomorrow entails. And even though it's not much of a woman uh, to do the slaughter of animals, everyone should know it. Because let's, um, you know, yes, in my where um, there's no, not a crisis, we should seek to have kosher certified meat all the times. But for the times that we have on institutions to provide enough sustenance, every Jew should be able to procure food for himself and his family. Uh, I don't know. I think that's uh, that. Um, I have some seeds that I'm sprouting. Seeds that are old are from the year they destroyed the entire crops. I had cantaloupe melons. I only had one left because they stole and ravaged everything. It was really breaking. I also ordered um, a beehive because it's going to be really useful uh, so food doesn't spoil. The thing is, I have a freezer. I have stuff in the freezer. But how long can we rely on freezers to preserve our food? You know, if there's ever going to be some uh, energy uh, blackout or something. So we should always have canned food and preserved foods. So, um, you know, instead of something to because we have a lot of flies and stuff here, because some people have animals, I would buy some chickens and some, you know, to have eggs and stuff, but, uh, yeah. So, I'm also relying on proteins and I'm going to have beans. Fine to uh, grow quinoa and uh, you know, lysine. And lysine is, is something that's not all plants like you. But going forward, it's going to be hard to have animals. Because you have animals, there's no warranty that they won't loot and destroy it. Um, the reason I want to grow quinoa is because no one knows what it looks like and what it is. And so, in case someone has crops, they'll just think it's some weed or something. And I'll still have something. I don't know, it's really scary. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not thrilled with the idea because I like to grow food, but I'm scared that someone will vandalize everything I worked for. No, I guess I, I have no choice. I was doing it for pleasure before. Now it's really maybe for survival. So wish me luck and I hope the, the jerks that Destroyed uh, my crops before I have grown up with it. But yeah, so yeah, I'm going to grow corn too, uh, beans. I don't know. I'm trying to maybe these. 
I don't know how feasible that is, but I'll try. Yeah, so that's it. I hope I'll post sooner rather than later. But I just wanted to give an update because in, uh, I've, I'm still trying to get used again. Okay. Be honest, uh, I stopped my medication, so I gave and I was a little embarrassed to go back on camera. I'm sorry about my mane, but it's humid. It's been raining for us, and I haven't done anything because of that, too. And when it's raining, my hair gets all like this. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go me, and I wish everyone a good day. And uh, be careful out there. And remember, if you have an apartment, it may not help a whole lot, but you can still plant. So, why well, not not grow some tomatoes, some peppers, you know, stuff that's all in an apartment? Um, if you have a balcony or a backyard, you know, grow some uh, veggies. Even if this crisis, you can always eat your own homegrown stuff. Um, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video. I also have some videos I didn't upload. I don't know if I'm going to upload them or not. But I made them so I might look different in some videos. Um, because I recorded them a long time ago. And uh, this one, and I'm not sure if I'm going to upload the other one. There's one when uh, itself, and uh, I recommend everyone to clip pets because they can hurt themselves badly. And I'm still not sure how good that video is. I don't usually edit videos because I like the, you know, or some people. I love, like when people sit talk and talk naturally without jump cuts and you know where there's you know, the organic conversation that doesn't have uh, you stopping every 10 seconds because you regret saying something and you need to so, you know it's i know i get it most people prefer heavily but i don't know i, I kind of like uh to people. Uh, I'm going to try and charge my uh, tablet, the other tablet that has a good camera and try to record the camera doesn't work properly. I mean, the only camera I have, I bought it in Japan 10 years ago. It makes 10 uh, uh, videos uh, and it's not that great. It's great for pictures. But it's not really so I'll try to take the tablet and uh, show you the land with and try to give you some advice on homesteading. I didn't done a lot from my grandmother, and I do things a little differently from her. But I'll try to give some tips to people who are not used to homesteading. I'll see you next time and stay safe.